Hey guys, it's a little bit before 9 a.m. I tried to sneak around yesterday with my badge, but looks like I need this to get into breakfast, which is around 9 a.m. And then we have a brief uh, meeting for the commentators and the analysts. So let's see what they have in store for us. So I have some bad news, guys. I had this very nice clip of LD and I at breakfast, but the phone, or sorry, the camera that I had recorded it on just didn't have any audio at all. I didn't even mute the microphone this time. It just didn't have any audio for this whole uh, two and a half minute segment. So we're just going through what we have for breakfast. Actually, LD is on the diet as well. He looks a lot thinner than he was before, but pretty much I can only eat the eggs, the bacon, and a little bit of the cheese. Not even these uh, lovely fruits, but he's giving us the rundown of everything. I think he actually had to go to Valve yesterday to complain. I think Shiva actually mentioned something like the eggs weren't that hot or something like that. It's not really something that I complain about. But as you can see, there's a lot of drinks and stuff in the background. There's like tea on the left, there's uh, water and soda on the right, because gamers drink soda in the morning. And uh, there's like a brief um, bit at the end about having AZN foods. There's always like rice and rice soup and fried rice. So this is actually my plate bacon, eggs, one slice of cheese, and some organic biologic chai tea. Uh, Kevin and I are sitting at our own table because the ta other table is awful. I, I was asking him why he wasn't vlogging and stuff. He said he was like really, really excited at TI2, but now he's just like, oh, I've been here four times now, and it's not as fun when you're not as uh, excited. But it's still exciting for me because it's my first vlog, and of course I'm still trying to work out all the technical difficulties but i think i'm just going to start using my iphone instead to record and hopefully all smooth sailing from there this is the second bit that i had recorded with andrew he looks really really happy now that he's gotten the caster schedule or maybe just because i'm actually sitting down and chatting with him we usually don't get that many opportunities to talk at the house and my camera did not actually take those uh, group stage analysts in pretty well, but pretty much it's going to be me, Chobra, Cinderin, and Winter on the analyst desk for the most part and all the other casters interspersed. So you can find the exact schedule on Twitter, Facebook, whatever your social media of choices. There's Owen in the back, also known as OD, Shiver. They're all chatting about. And Andrew and I have a pretty lovely conversation, but we can't actually hear any of it. I'll try and re record it. Um, tomorrow or some of the other days because we had some pretty interesting stuff to talk about. So again, sorry for the technical issues. I'll get them solved immediately. So after breakfast, we really didn't have that much planned for the rest of the day. They just gave out the caster schedules, told us a little bit about what's going to go on there, and then Valve let us free for the rest of the day to do whatever we wanted to do. So this is what I did for the majority of the day. And after that, I woke up to a slew of direct messages and messages, people trying to get in contact with me, and I was trying to figure out what in the world was going on. And Matt had actually messaged me and said that Valve wanted me downstairs and to talk about some stuff. So it turns out that they want to go shopping for some clothes tomorrow. There's pretty basic rules for having clothes on camera. Uh, mostly solid colors, not white because it looks a little weird, no stripes, and generally no crazy patterns because they cause a lot of artifacts and issues when video recording them. So they offered to take us some clothes shopping and I'll probably do that tomorrow morning and just had to go downstairs and sign a contract and I was like, huh, why didn't they use the phones that they gave us to contact me? They actually got uh, Cyborg Matt to direct message me on Twitter saying that they needed me. I was like, oh, that's really strange. I was like, oh, you know, thanks for the heads up. And then he's like, oh, no problem. Valve uh, didn't want to contact you because <laughs> they were worried that you might be resting. And then I would check the time that the message was sent. It was like 3.05 p.m. I was just like, mm, they know me a little, <laughs> a little bit too well because uh, I was napping pretty much from after the, uh, after the meeting until that point. Anyways, so we have the group stage announced with all the teams in group A and group B also announced and then we have the wild card on the 26th. The bracket for that has been released and I'll go over the group stages a little bit later but for the wild card which is happening first there is uh, two sides of the bracket. The top part is going to be C deck 
versus Team Vega Squadron, and then the bottom part is going to be Team Archon, also known as NARV2, versus MVP Phoenix. MVP Phoenix being the SEA runner-up, Root being the, oh, sorry, not Root, um, Archon being the North American runner-up, CDEC being the runner-up to eHome in the China qualifiers, and Vega Squadron coming out of the European side. So I, if I had to do power rankings for this, it would be CDEC, Vega, MVP Phoenix, and uh, Archon as my last one. And CDEC, I think, is just actually really, really strong, even after losing Maybe. They actually take a lot of games off T1 teams. They beat IG, they beat Vichy, they took LGD to five games, and LGD is actually my number three in the power rankings for the main event. They're just behind Secret and EG in my books and slightly stronger than IG and Vichy, at least in their current state. Vega Squadron, I have a second. I think they come from the hardest qualifiers, the EU qualifiers, and they've been okay, been able to perform like decently, I would say, versus tier one and tier two teams. The other two, MVP Phoenix versus Archon, I think MVP Phoenix just has a little bit more stability. They didn't form like two months before TI qualifiers started, and they just have a lot more practice together, a lot more chemistry, and just a little bit more experience in the uh, most recent patch under their belts. Archon has not had the best of results lately, dropping some teams to dropping some games to other teams in the American scene. Uh, but oddly, this bracket is not. Uh, in the typical one and four seed on the top versus the two and three seed on the bottom, I, it's like one and two and then three and four. So this makes it much, much more difficult for the one and the two seed to actually go on through because one of them is going to be immediately knocked down to the lower bracket and gives a little bit better of a chance to the three and four seed. I doubt that Valve took this into consideration when they seeded it. I'm pretty sure it was just completely random because they all should theoretically be on fairly even footing being the runner up of each of the TI uh qualifiers. So I'll give more info on what I think about the group stage, if they're fair or not, uh, tomorrow. But thank you guys for sticking around for vlog day two. I'll, I'm sure I'll have some more interesting content aside uh, from my face. But camera issues, okay. Thanks. See you tomorrow.